This morning's reading comes from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Keep on loving each other as brothers. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoners, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the, outway, the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This ends the reading of the word. We're in the third week of our sermon series on uh, Ready for a Change. And uh, let's open with a prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks for calling us here again, and we pray that you open our minds and hearts to your truth. If where I fail to speak your words, that your words might be heard, or at least mine not heard. We pray that we be blessed in this moment. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, change. Uh, the more or the longer you live, the more of it you, uh, you see. And of course, th uh, change even comes to things that seem absolutely tried and, and true. Um, did anybody here say over the age of 30 or 35 ever play Monopoly as a kid? Anybody, uh, we, uh, it was my mom's favorite game for us kids because it took so long. Well, uh, if so, you, you might not recognize the game today or at least the global version of Monopoly. Uh, Boardwalk is gone. It's replaced by London. Uh, Illinois Avenue is gone. It's replaced by uh, Montreal. Uh, electric Company and Waterworks are gone, and solar farms and wind farms are in. <laughs> Instead of dollars, players spend monos, which sounds something like a disease, and they no longer buy or sell or rent with cash. Uh, instead, they do it by electronically registering their transactions. Monopoly. Electronics, it doesn't seem right. But worse than that are the changes that uh, they're experimenting with for M&Ms. Now, you know, the history of M&Ms is they were developed in, in World War II in the early years, so our soldiers and sailors and Marines could carry chocolate with them anywhere uh, on the battlefield or on the sea, you know, melt in your mouth and not in your not in your hands, uh, but they're now experimenting with a premium uh, version. And you know, I know of the almond and uh, peanut butter versions and such, but they're now uh, experimenting with uh, flavors like raspberry almond and uh, cherry cordial, pumpkin spice. And the plain brown wrapper is gone on the premium M&Ms. Instead, they come in a box. And the hard shell is gone too. Now, they're not M&Ms anymore without the hard shell, are they? Now, you know, changes also come to things we might think of as, as sacred and timeless, like the Word of God, or at least the media we see it or hear it by. You know, at first it was transmitted orally, literally stories told over the campfire, over uh, breakfast. Uh, and then it was written down successively on three P's. First, papyrus was developed, and then parchment, and then, then paper. 
And uh, now we no longer ask that cell phones be cut off during a service because that may well be where people are seeing the scripture. Change is constant. Can't get away from it. it it's also a constant in our personal lives, uh, isn't it? Well, um, kind of. Uh, sometimes we, we, we need to change and we don't, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago when we get stuck uh, in, in ruts, you know, the marriage or the uh, job or the uh, addiction or uh, I'm thinking of our son and daughter-in-law who are going to have a second newborn in October, yay, and uh, uh, they're going to be tired and weary to the bone uh, for a long time. Then on the other hand, there's, there's these changes that are uh, sea changes, you know, having the baby, changing career, uh, moving, uh, or there's a spot on the x-ray that turns out to be malignant, or, or our child is stuck in addic addiction, or we lose our job and can't pay uh, our bills. But whenever times of life we're in, though, uh, whenever changes happen in the in the world or, or in our lives, uh, whether we're mired in a rut or whether there are waves of change that are sweeping over us, or maybe we're at a time of life where it's a smooth uh, sailing, each of us needs God to either get through the day or to maintain our sanity or to guide and lead us in, in the best life possible. You know, we need a rock as well as an inspiration as well as God's energy. So no matter what's going on out there or, or in here, uh, we can have faith in our unchanging God. Change is constant, as you see the changes of, our, of the seasons, but we can have trust in God who never changes. Now, Hebrews 8, you heard, you heard the very end of it. I heard some people react to that last verse, 13, 8, uh, that Jesus is the same yesterday, the same today, and the same uh, tomorrow. Uh, the Revelations verses uh, have something uh, in that kind of like that that kind of expand on the unchanging God. So listen to these verses again, if you will. Grace to you, peace from him who is and who was and who is to come from the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ. I thought I would have trouble with the clicker, but it's the volume. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the newborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever. Look, he is coming on the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Now, uh, it's in Revelation. It's tucked away in Revelation. Has anybody ever tried to read Revelation? Well, some people say that they understand it. It's a little bit of a challenge for me, and I know Revelation can weird some people out. You know, there's some images in there that will make your hair stand on end. You know, the, the lake that's on fire, horses with heads like lions, uh, dragons, and sea beasts. Uh, but this week's text is uh, a little bit easier to understand. Now, now a little background on Revelation. St. John wrote it at the very end of the first century. Now, you might say, well, he was an old man. If you did, you would be right. He was also living in exile. And he was writing to and about a church that was emerging again in old Israel. Now, I say old Israel because Jesus' prediction of the destruction of the temple had come true by then. 
and people were scattered from Jerusalem and old Israel uh, across the known world at that time. Uh, now, even worse, the only legal religion in old Israel, as well as the whole area around the Mediterranean, was worship of Caesar and the rulers of Rome. No Judaism was allowed. No Christianity was allowed. If they caught you, they might kill you. They were still crucifying people at the time. Temple down, synagogues down, people dispersed, no religion. It was a time of, of terrible, terrible persecution. You know, think of the faithfulness of these people to whom he was riding around the Mediterranean to that emerging church in Israel. It's a powerful uh, testimony. It was the hardest of times you can imagine. It, it hadn't been too long since uh, Nero had, had lit up Christians, dipped them in tar and lit them up during the night to illumine the streets of Rome. And John is writing to the churches telling them how to hang on. But what he has to say is, is, is timeless. And first he's telling them, uh, have faith in God. Trust in God, who never changes. Listen to what he's doing in these verses. He begins by saying, grace and peace to you from the one who is and who was and who is to come. And he ends by saying, I am the Lord God, the Alpha and the Omega. In other words, though they are living in times when their life is imperiled because of the practice of their religion, John was saying God controls the past and the present and the future, and that can bring you grace and, and peace. God is eternal. And, and unchanging, he says, the same yesterday and today and tomorrow. And we can find our grace and our peace and our inspiration and our power in that rock and in that inspiration. Now, in verse 5, he says some things about Jesus we need to hear. He says, first, Jesus is the faithful witness who models perseverance and martyrdom. Now think of that. He is telling them you might be led to the cross too. But, but then he says he is the firstborn of the dead. He is sovereign over death. And he will deliver you too. And third, he's saying that in his eternity, God rules all. In other words, Jesus shows us how to live and die faithfully, no matter what the times. You believe that? So he tells them to trust in the unchanging God in all times, no matter what is happening out there or what is happening in here. Now, I know we like to use excuses for what is happening to me, right? I can't live it out because this is so hard on me. You know, like I was in my uh, bed last uh, Sunday uh, and Richard was preaching and, and uh, Maury came in and said, well, that's a great sermon that he gave. And, and I said, so it's a good thing that I'm here in pain. And she said, yes, right? <laughs> well, the point is, no matter whether you're in pain or not, you're to still serve God. No matter what, he is to be uh, your anchor in times of turbulence, in, in times of serenity, uh, in, in times just of where you're a little tired. In all times, trusting God who never changes. And, and then John says, trusting God's will and God co God's commands. 
Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Now, how do you acknowledge God? Well, you, you can acknowledge him with prayer. You can acknowledge him with worship. You can also acknowledge him by seeking to discern his will <clears throat> and by living out his commands. Um, the truth that God is eternal and unchanging means that no matter what happens out there, our lives are to be governed by his will and his ways. In, in Hebrews 13 that Diane read, the beginning of the service, tells us that because God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, here is the way you are to live. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. Continue to remember those who are in prison as if you were with them in prison. And those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all in the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and the immoral. Then he says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Forsake you. In other words, you, you keep your eye on God and you live according to his will and his commands in all times. Third, he says you need to trust in God's power to save. I don't know if this, uh, if y'all can see this one very well, but a kid is kind of flying off a roof. I remember when this happened with my dad, and <clears throat> he had to get up right here so I could just kind of tumble off, right? This kid is flying. He trusts in his father's power to, to save him. So without taking away uh, from any of us, or, or, or belittling any of our life experiences, there is nothing that we are going to experience that hasn't in some way happened to other people, other Christians before us, whom God has delivered. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, no testing has overtaken you that is not common uh, to everyone. And I truly believe that about my life, for sure. And, and this is actually, actually good news, if you think about it. Because that means that no matter who we are, no matter what we've done, you know, no matter what we're going through, no matter how we've handled our life, God is there with the power to save. We could have messed it all up royally, and God is there with this power to save because God's not going to change his position on grace and forgiveness. He is the same yesterday, the same today, and the same tomorrow. He calls you his child. He, he loves you. He, he seeks to free you from whatever it is that imprisons you and sets you on his, his path. You know, that is the unchanging reality of God that we celebrate on Easter Sunday. It's the power of love and the power of resurrection that is available in each of our lives. So he's saying that we can trust in our unchanging God. We can trust and live by his will and commands. And we can trust in his power to save. This is from uh, Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. The leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought. Hello, new fountain. It has no worries in a year of drought. It never fails to bear fruit. And these are actually trees along a stream. I don't know if it projects... Uh, very well. But this is true. 
blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. You know, we live in a fad-driven culture, priests of New Fountain, and our technology pushes change, you know, faster than we can even uh, adapt this week to what happened last week. It's, it's happening again. You know, it's, things seem to come and go. And in our uh, changing world, you know, we, we need to lift our, our eyes, our hearts, our, our minds, you know, our hands to an unchanging God. You know, to the beauty and wonder and, and power and awe of eternity. And take comfort and hope that he is working his will and his ways in and among and through each of us. You know, to, to bring us those things we need to bless us with his presence and his power. Thanks be to God. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. Let's pray. Eternal one, always loving and forgiving, always compassionate and affirming, we bring our prayers to you. We know that you listen with care. In your way and in your time, you respond. Help us, Lord, to trust in you, no matter the ruts, the upheavals, or the routine. Amen.